Hey, everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Hi, guys. I'm Sam Fricker. I'm an Australian Olympic diver, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are live with me, Steve Cuoco, here on Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Thank you for tuning in on the iOS and Android app. We are on Alexa. We can be all over your house. Just hook up those those spots, those perfect spots where you would like your, your Echo or whatever it is you're using. You know, go ahead and plug in to your Alexa skill, Power 98.5. You can go to power985.com. Click the bottom tick on the bottom right-hand side. Send your comments, suggestions, thoughts. If you want to be a guest on any one of our shows, let me tell you with Lady T with Terelia Hoskins. We've got Catherine and Company with Catherine Swain. We've also got Alicia Pazzoni with uh, Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni. Uh, you can tune in anytime by checking our um, schedule on power985.com. I've got with me today an incredible ally, somebody who I'm looking forward to building a great friendship with. He's also from New Jersey, where I'm from. He is Kyle Newman. He is an award-winning filmmaker and New York Times best-selling Hugo Award-nominated author. His directorial work encompasses multiple feature films, including Fanboys, the Star Wars-fueled comedy starring Kristen Bell and Seth Rogen, the action comedy Barely Lethal, starring Oscar nominees Haley Steinfeld and Samuel L. Jackson for A24 Films, and his most recent one-up starring Ruby Rose for Lionsgate and BuzzFeed Studios, set in the world of esports. I've I've got a lot we've got to cover. Also, with what the hell is going on over on IMDb, how can this film even be rated before it even came out? It's got 2.5 stars. These people who think that they're film critics and, and you know, gurus of I don't know what, maybe at, for Chuck E. Cheese, but definitely not for fucking film. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of respect for Kyle, a lot of respect for the cast. Uh, as you know, I recently had Lolita Melina on the show. And uh, what an incredible star-studded actress, uh, full of life, full of character, charisma, passion and uh, i'm so so very happy she's been you know in this film uh with an all-star cast so without further ado kyle welcome to live on air with stephen cuoco on power 98.5 thank you stephen what a joy to be on here with you <laughs> where it's going to be more often than not we're going to be having you we want to start off in a best place who is kyle newman and what is it about you that everybody should know? I am a filmmaker hailing from New Jersey. I went to NYU film school and I follow my heart with my projects. If there's something I love or something I want to see out there as a fan, I'm going to probably try to make it. So that's why my works ranged from Star Wars fandom to gaming to Dungeons and Dragons um big music fanatic so i love doing music videos so my tastes are across the board and i think that's important to be true to yourself in your work and to put as much of yourself into it but also recognizing what your audience is and who you're making it for and finding that that unique balance that harmony between making it art and making sure it finds a place so people can experience it and you can hopefully make them smile or make them laugh or make them feel something. And you're doing that, you know, 
very effortlessly. Why I say that is because we as people from the East Coast, we have a certain way of how we integrate and interact uh, with within projects and people and uh, locations or wherever we go. Knowing you're from Morristown, New Jersey, know it very well. I'm from the Phillipsburg area, grew up yeah. in Washington, Warren County area. And it is an absolute pleasure to see what you're doing so gentle, yet impactful, meaningful, with purpose, no fluff, no BS. And now you're on the West Coast. You're you're running strong, like an Olympian, working with top-tier people, but yet you're very humble. You have a family. You're not letting this get to your head. You're very strategic in a very smart business way of knowing what you're looking for, but leaving it slightly open-ended to be able to grow and expand and to give permission, uh, not only to yourself, but your team and to those who you're working with to, to find people that are creative and that also want to learn, not only from you, but to, to be able to expand their craft. Having worked with Ruby Rose and Lolita Molina and many others, um, what has been the best and most proudest moment that you've had as a mentor, as a leader, as a director in your business? Well, first and foremost, thank you. That was very kind of you. Um, you know, I am constantly learning. So while sometimes I have to put on the hat of a leader and be the director on set, which is something I I feel I really relish doing and excel at doing, uh, I love the collaboration. And I feel like on every project, I'm learning from people, different vocational things. You know, one of the beauties of filmmaking, and my, my background is fine arts and painting, and I can do all that. But I don't want to sit in a studio and sit by myself and maybe tell something in a very um, two-dimensional way. I love the temporal qualities of film. I love the collaboration with mediums, uh, working with cinematographers, working on the acting side, working design and architecture you're working with hair makeup clothing music it's all fused together into uh, a super medium that's how i look at film it, it can do everything um film is like a dream so you can really achieve anything with it and being able to work with all these uniquely talented people and every time you're working with a new set of people because they're, you're working in different places and crews rotate and cast rotate you're always learning and adapting and figuring out how best to get something out of the person you're collaborating with and how can you get the best out of you because so much of filmmaking and so much of directing is ego management but not in a bad way people come to you and they have a certain style or a certain you know approach to acting and another actor might have a different approach and you're there as the director and you're trying to find commonality between them and so you have to learn you have to understand people read them very quickly discover who they are, what makes them tick, and then how to get the best of them and how to also get them to play well with other people. And that is so much of what the, um, vocationally, what I have to do. So there's that. And then there's obviously you have to be, you know, your story inside and out. And working with people like Ruby, Ruby was just an immense talent. She came in, we had some difficulties getting her to Canada. We were shooting this during the height of the pandemic, at the end of 2020 and early 20. 21 and if she was to come to canada to shoot toronto she wouldn't be able to come back at the united states uh as an australian citizen at the time and there was a lot of chaos going on with with um stuff that happened on you know in washington on january 6th and the passport office was being closed even though hers was trying to be expedited so she couldn't come to Cal to uh to canada so but she was very clear she's like i want to be a part of this i'll do whatever i can to be a part of this and that type of passion speaks volumes and makes you know you work harder as the director and so we we had to move the production at the end over the border into the united states to buffalo to accommodate ruby and it changed the way we made the movie because when you see the film you won't be able to tell but there are hundreds of shots where ruby's not actually on set with the rest of the cast and she's against a green screen and i have to then composite ruby into the scenes and still find a way to generate that chemistry but ruby came in um knowing this was a going to be a challenge and she was just ready to work i mean she was just a machine she was so prepared every beat of her character ready to collaborate ready to do whatever it took to be a part of this family with the girls and knowing it was the girls this movie they're they're really the the, the leads ruby's the coach in the film an esports coach uh a teacher at a university who gets drafted in to uh, coach these girls 
uh, in East Collegiate Esports League versus um, many male driven teams. But um, as a professional, she came in and said, you know, this is the girls movie. They've been shooting this for a few weeks. And how do I fit into this little family? You know, that's the behind the scenes of it. And she put her ego aside. She was just, just, you know, went with the flow and, you know, very um, respectful and smart of her. And it's just things like that. You just learn from people that have, you know, been around and have been doing it. And, um, but there isn't a single person that, you know, working with in the key departments and casts where I'm not like expanding. And my philosophy when I'm writing or making anything, people give you the worst advice when you're a writer. They're like, write what you know. I don't want to write what I know. I want to write what I want to know. I want to write where I want to expand into. Where does my mind want to go? What do I want to learn? I don't want it to be a regurgitation of what I already know. I want this to be something that I'm not an expert on. And I was not an expert on esports when I made this movie and contributed to writing this movie. I barely, you know, I was a gamer my whole life, but esports as a medium watching it was not something I was super versed in. I was fascinated by it. I'd seen a little bit. I knew it was big, uh, but I wasn't following it um, as closely. And so I had to learn it and I had to immerse myself in it. And the same thing with, you know, the, the books I've been doing with Dungeons and Dragons, it was immersion. Like I have to, I have to become an expert on it, even though I love it. And I know a lot about it. I need to, I need to get to that point where I can then master it to a degree where I can then authentically tell people about it and take them through that story. So I think it's always putting your ego aside and saying, what can I be better at? What do I want to learn? What am I not a master of? And then moving in that direction, as opposed to saying, I already know everything and I'm going to tell you about it. Do you believe people, not any close to you, but also that the audience, that the films and projects that you've worked on, and we're going to touch a little bit, or, or if not a lot, however much you would like to and what you can share with us. The recent project with House with the View by Cynthia Lovely, guest starring Katy Perry, directed by you. Yes. Do you, do you believe people, you know, especially after this deplorable review or, or these ratings, which I, I think we can do away with it on IMDb, uh, are people getting it or, or do you find that the majority of the time there is a lot of subjective viewpoint and thought put into what is being put out there online um, such as, you know, social media, IMDB before you or even the cast is given a chance to, to be looked at and to be seen as real professional people, which you are in a business. But why, why are we in this position where, where people are just blatantly being disrespectful by abusing certain areas such as, you know, viewing and reviewing about content whether they've seen it or not. I, well, it's, it's going to be something hard to police and hard to change, but people are ruthless and selfish when you hide behind an avatar. And one of the most disheartening things with one up, I'm extremely proud of the movie. I love it. I laugh. I smile. Me, I made it and I can still watch it 500 times. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. You know, there's, it's something rare when you, you make something and you, you're happy to keep watching it. I, I'm so impressed by everyone in it. I'm so impressed by what, what we pulled off for not a lot of money people don't know those things they, they don't know we made it for under four million they don't know we shot this entire movie in under 25 days if you watch it you're not going to believe it 1200 vfx and four minutes of animation and movie within a movie with to direct the game play that's another they're out they're not actually on screen playing that's all green screen everything's written later comped in and you make this narrative happening on screen that then these actors are reacting to so i have to like balance it all in my head they don't know that and they don't have to know that. But what is disheartening is before the movie even came out, it was getting just ransacked with negative reviews because people saw the trailer and they saw girl gamers. Screw this. This sounds so woke. This is so lame. And there's a concerted effort to tank the movie's ratings. So before the movie was out, before anyone had ever seen it, we had hundreds and hundreds of uh, one star votes. Uh, one out of ten. This is not one out of five. This is like one out of ten. People just trying to sandbag it, and that's because they're afraid. This is a lot of gamer boys, gamer bros, trolls gathering up, saying, "Let's go, let's go ransack this rating," and that's unfortunate because the reason we made this movie 
is probably exactly draw attention to those type of people that are so threatened by the idea that that gaming is for everyone that they're going to go attack this film, which has a message, a, a message of inclusivity. It's not saying girls are better. Um, I, I don't think that's healthy either to just declare that. I think it's just the message is gaming is for everyone. Let everyone have a seat at the table. Why not? Like it, they shouldn't be gatekeep. So, um, and we do that in a very fun way. And as woke as the movie is, there are so many things that poke fun at what's going on right now that are also ridiculous. And I try to keep a very balanced approach to it and keep different POVs at play because I think that's healthy too. I think if you just have one mantra and you try to jam that down, down uh, people's throats, it falls on deaf ears or you're, or you're preaching in an echo chamber because that's the people that see it. But I, I tried to program the movie to be very um, eclectic in its POVs and also in its comedy. I think there's something for everyone and also spanning generations of, of gaming. So it goes all the way back to the early 70s and the birth of gaming and the games people used to play. And I grew up on, my brothers had Atari and ColecoVision. I grew up Nintendo and Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast. And it takes you through all the consoles and all the arcade stuff up to present day. And I really think there's something for everyone. So it's unfortunate when you see people take control of a, of a, uh, of a format where they can they can vote and if they're threatened by something they're just going to destroy it to, to prevent people from seeing something that hopefully they would get to see because i really think this movie is for younger people i think young kids girls guys watch this movie and realize what's what's it matter we're having fun i mean i try to disarm people with it and, and show that it's, it's it's just ways for humans to bond it's just it's a game you know and i feel like about all gaming not just video gaming but um there's really nothing to deter it, and it was disheartening. So you're about to release the movie, you know, you're going to premiere, and you're seeing like, how's it looking up a one star? None of these people have even seen it yet. So, but that's what we're up against, Stephen. You know, it's it's a it's a crazy time. But and who's going to stop it? They they don't really care. These sites, they're getting clicks, they're getting traffic. If people want to come there and shit talk this this movie, then okay. I mean, no one's going to police it. That's what's unfortunate. Um, but what can counteract it is people seeing it and being positive. And if you like it, you go spread the word and leave a positive thing. So that's all I'm trying to do is engage with people. I don't want to tell you to go out and give it a five star. I don't, I don't care, but I want you to give it a fair shot. I want you to watch it. If you don't like it, then don't like it, but at least watch it before you're allowed to rate it. That's insane. I agree. And it just featured on prime video on the 15th, right? Yeah. It debuted on prime video. And uh, it was a Lionsgate and Amazon Prime distributed it. And uh, Prime's our portal in uh, the US, Australia. And it is coming to the rest of the world. I guess those details are, are going to be out there soon. But um, we did this also in conjunction with BuzzFeed Studios. And this was really the first production out of uh, their new venture, uh, trying to make a slate of films, forward thinking films in uh, conjunction with Lionsgate. Well, I'm going to continue to support your projects no matter what. I really don't give a shit what ratings say. It it doesn't dictate how I perceive something. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I did not watch this yet. I would have loved to have attended the premiere. However, I do have Prime. I will watch this. I will support it. And where Thank I you. can, absolutely, Kyle, and where I can leave a review, I'm going to do it. And I know that I'm going to be proud of the review because I'm going to be objective about it, professional about it, and I'm going to look at it as this is a work of art. There are people's lives that were were that come came together to be part of this, and and that's how I see it. It's it's more than just the money that that you put into this, Kyle. It's more than just the experience. All of that is important. It's the fact that these are jobs. This is how I look at it. When people are rating, it is. When it's my livelihood. Yeah. You know, I take it seriously. I have little kids. I have an eight year old, a seven year old, a 16 month old. And I want to keep telling stories and creating. I'm very proud of this movie. It's great. And and also, it's, it's, it is the first esports movie comedy. You know, there's been documentary stuff, but this is like the first real content in this world. Maybe that's why it's so threatening to people because it's been walled off in a lot of ways. And it is very uh, male centric. And it's, it's huge, but maybe it's been hindered by it's um, being so gender centric to, to one side of things. But 
this is an opportunity if you're into gaming and you believe in the message you know watch the movie and spread the word and that that's helpful but i also think beyond that it's just a damn fun movie it's fun like so regardless of the politics of it or anything else it's it's it stands on its own as a, as a thoroughly entertaining film which i is, is the most important thing is are you making something entertaining are you making something that no matter who you are or where you're coming from or your perspective even if you don't know gaming or you don't care i want people to be able to watch this movie be transported away somewhere go on a journey it's a sports film even though it's people sitting behind a computer uh, com- computers and competing it's still a sports film it's about a family it's about misfits and underdogs and so i watched all you know the the entire lexicon of sports films out there all types from a league of their own to cool runnings to you know you name it there's there's all types of sports film and it still partakes in that genre but it is just it's fun and it's an escape and regard regardless of all the other stuff um i promise you know 100 minutes of of uh pure enjoyment <laughs> and i believe you and i'm going to give you a really fair and honest review uh, after I watch this, and as you know, nothing has an expiration date. I say this to music artists all the time. You could write a song. We can, you know, you know, look at and consider one up, you know, debuted in 2022, 10 years from now, if a person never had watched or even listened to something and it's their first time, it is just as brand new to them 10 years from now as it would be right now for us. Absolutely. We're People gonna, are going to keep experiencing it. Things are going to get rejuvenated. Things go through cycles. Look at what, you know, there's a, you know, the Kate Bush revival uh, via Stranger Things. Suddenly a whole new generation is exposed to it. Um, I love many different decades of music, all types of music. I go back and do it all the time. I'm going to expose my kids to stuff and stuff that might be 50 years old. Maybe I'm going to pop on, you know, uh, a Beatles album they're gonna be like whoa what's this dad you know it's for them it's brand new for us we've been listening to it our whole lives so um there's always that op- opportunity for something to be fresh and new even if it's been there in quotes for a while we're gonna go ahead we're gonna play the trailer I know you can't see it but head on over you know you can go to IMDB uh, that's how I'm viewing it right now. I've watched it already. I want to watch it again. I just want to bring in the the mood, the ambience, the feeling, um, everything about this into this interview. Because once again, these are jobs. These are people with real lives. You know, like Kyle said, he's got a family. He's got kids. You know, this isn't just a fun project. And even if it was, the fact of it is, is that people don't make these projects because they're bored and they've got nothing else to do. This is their skill, their talent, their passion. And once again, it's also their livelihood. So let's continue to better support each other and one another, be less subjective, more objective. And there are times to where if it is not a feel good to you, then maybe you just should keep it to yourself. And maybe, just maybe, you are not in the right emotional, mental state of being in that moment. So consider that if you did watch this film, One Up, or any film, take in consideration where you were at within your mood and even position in life and consider to re-watch it again when you're in that space so that you can be present to be able to embody the moment and the mood and the experience. And I, that's what I do all the time, Kyle, and I wait to watch something when I know I can be present. It's just like if if all of you, you and the cast members were on stage, I'm at the arena and you're performing in front of me, I'm going to go when I'm available to take you in, to embrace and bring you into my space. I will not do it if if I'm not in a space to be able to know that I'm not gonna enjoy it. So when you listen to this now, you listen to this show later, We will re-air this show uh, with Kyle Newman tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Let's go ahead and play the uh, trailer. Sorry I didn't wake you. You look so cozy sleeping through one of your fantasy beatings. Want to go to a silent disco tonight? Uh, I have practice. 
Do you ever stop gaming? Only to eat and sleep. It wasn't long ago that video games were marketed entirely to a generation of guys. Oh. But now, gamers are everyone. One, two, three, beta! The year on support. Don't screw it up. Dustin, they're flanking us! But you have a lot to learn, okay? Seriously? I'm a nationally ranked player. The only reason you have a spot on this team is because you guys have, you know, vaginas. I'm done. Watch what I do. We're gonna start an all girls team and take down the betas. Got got Go, 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 Coach us. Come on, Mom. They need you. I mean, they're totally pathetic. Hey. We need to get back to the basics. Oh my god. And screw my core. We're gonna try mentally. Lily, look out! Ah! Spiritually. We do this every Saturday. Physically. Does he bring axe body spray? <laughs> I want it to be as authentic as possible. Garrett will be only funding one esports team, which means it's either you or the betas. What about my scholarship? Unless you win, I would be forced to cancel it. Girl power, everybody! Oh, it is an eight bitch. We're like eight bitches. Oh, I'm moving up right now. Jump in, baby. Water's warm, and I'm already wearing a t shirt. Oh, what is happening? I'm back. Welcome to the National East Championship. It's time to reignite the fire inside of you like you're a kid again. It's win or game Go full chicken, Lily. Actually, I actually have a secret to tell you. You want to step a little closer? I like secrets. Mm. Oh, God, no, no. That's awesome. I can't wait to watch this, and I think I'm going to watch it this weekend. Good. Thank you. It's, you know what? There's a lot of different genres of films that I love. It was great to be able to blend these things together. I feel like I do it in my own unique way. I guess I've done a lot of comedies now, so I found what I find to be a good sweet spot where it really the heart of the movie has to shine. These characters, I want to I want to see these characters as humans and not just archetypes or placeholders. You interviewed Lolina. You know, she's like she's wonderful. She's got her own very unique story. Uh, we cast Lolita, Lolita out of um, Ohio. You know, she joins us up there. It's not like, you know, she's sitting here, some big actress in Hollywood. We, we, we cast very unique people in this movie for all the characters. And most of them are discoveries uh, that are the leads that um, I took the time to really, you know, curate the cast very thoughtfully. So there's, there's um, some really strong comedic and human voices on display. And I think that lends to it and then there's some real genuine chemistry between these girls and you could feel that while you're making it they formed a little family it wasn't just work this was something passionate you know th this movie took me nearly two years to make it's not like a job you go do for a few weeks and you're done like when you're directing it consumes you it's your life you can't do anything else you have to fight endless battles to protect the movie from people of all different types that are going to come in and try to change the way the movie is seen or marketed or cut. And you have to be ruthless and relentless. And you have to just push people in an encouraging way to keep working, to do the best beyond what they're even paid for. You have to keep going until the movie's really done. Everyone's got to go above and beyond to get a movie, an independent movie or a small movie over the finish line. And it has to be compelling. And, and you have to really make people believe that what you're doing has merit. And we had a, such a great team and just getting our VFX over the, the finish line with the money we had was nearly impossible. But we, like I said, we had almost 1,200 visual effect shots. And that's like, that's movies that are like $100 million have that, that, that kind of uh, VFX workload. We had a lot to do in this film. And like I said, it was only exasperated because Ruby had to be composited into, uh, you know, half of her scenes. So, it just faced, faced a lot of challenges, but I think it's that what I'm proud of is the heart um, in this movie, regardless of, you know, gaming or whatever. It's it's people being passionate about something and something very similar with, with fanboys, whether or not you were a Star Wars fan of fanboys. It was like you at least root for these these characters to get where they're going and to get what their dream is. 
Take us now into House with a View by Cynthia Lovely, guest starring Katy Perry, directed by you. What should we know? What do we want to know? What is what is it about this project that just blows it out of the water of something very different because it's you. You're Kyle Newman. You directed it. There is no one like you. And honestly, I do respect and really like your work. Well, thank you. It was it was so fun. I mean, Cynthia is my fiance and she goes professionally by Sin, C Y N. That's her uh that's her music handle, um, her her music identity. Uh, her real name is Cynthia Nabosny. Um, she's from Detroit. We met at the very beginning of the pandemic. Uh, I was going through a divorce and we met and, and bonded remotely online through FaceTime calls, all that stuff. So it was a COVID uh, romance. We now have a 17 month old baby and Cynthia's got an album coming out. Her music is incredible. Katy Perry discovered her signed her she's the first person katie signed to her her label and uh she's been doing uh she had music in promising young woman um birds of prey uh moonshot she did a pokemon theme song she's been doing all types of um you know her song was on the um what was that uh the the netflix one about the girl who's is she a criminal or is she not with um i'm going blank on it but it was great and she's just had her stuff in so many different cool shows and um but she's been working towards this album so this is the first single from her forthcoming debut album which is out later this year so it was a big opportunity uh and a big challenge for me because i want to make sure you know that i can help however i can launch it in the best way possible and suddenly katie's going to be in the video too so there's a lot at stake and it's a good chance to really reintroduce or introduce Cynthia at this scale to the, the world. She's had a lot of success and hits, but this is like, you know, build up to an album. So uh, the idea was something we initially started with Cynthia and we bounced it around and I helped, you know, expand it and refine it and put it on paper with her and to uh, what became our treatment. And there's a bit of a narrative to it. And there's scenes that bookend it with Katy Perry at the front of the video and the back of the video. And we scripted those. And, um, you know, it's not like a huge budget. Again, you know, I shot the entire video in one day, but I am going to make sure that it's the best it can absolutely be for the time we have and the resources we have. And it came out awesome. Um, I mean, Cynthia is just naturally charismatic and comedic and there's the song is very playful house for the view it's, it's aspirational but it also has attitude and it's a really great summer jam um it's just so infectious and so we wanted the the, the video and the style to be buoyant and, and fun lively to capture cynthia's you know sprightly personality but also she's got something to say and she's got edge and she's got wit in her lyrics so it has to capture all these things and coalesce into something that's very consumable, bite-sized, and um, is in sync with the vibe of the song itself. And that's your goal with the music video. It's like, what, what is the vibe of the song? What is the message of it? What, how are you going to complement people's experience? Because when they hear it, they're going to envision something. And how can you extrapolate on that and expand it and support it visually in ways that you know, just hearing a song can't do? Um, I've done music videos before, like I did, I've worked with Taylor Swift, I've worked with Lana Del Rey, um, gotten to direct some very big people, you know, Selena Gomez, different people like that. So I, um, but I don't often work in music videos. I only work in music videos if it's somebody I really love or I'm close with. Like at the time I did the Taylor stuff, I was living at Taylor's house and I was doing work on my house. We were close. And, um, um, you know, she's a godmother to my second child. So she's like, you want to do a video? I was like, yes. It became a very pure experience, just me and her coming up with the concept and doing it. Same thing with Lana Del Rey. We're very good friends. And she said, I have this little window to do a video. Do you want to do something? Dropped what I was doing. And we did a video for Summertime Sadness. Um, this was a similar thing. You know, I was the movie was about to come out and had a lot of other stuff going on. But Cynthia is my best friend in the world. So I wanted to collaborate with her. So I dropped everything I was doing and we just put our heads together and we said, this is what we want to make. And it was a very pure process. And I like that with music videos. It should be unfiltered. 
uh, removed from all the bullshit of labels and managers. Those people are important, but what you want to do is get to the heart of the artist and the song. What are they saying? What means something to them? You only have three minutes, three and a half minutes to go convey that. You want to strip away as much as possible, get to the heart of it, create something pure, and then have fun doing it. And then you add those people back in. But more often than not, in the music video world, um, it, it, it's like you have to go through lots and lots of hoops, um, lots and lots of barriers, and it doesn't feel pure. So I don't always pursue it. You know, if people come to me and they're like, I really want you to do something cool. But I'm not going to go out there and pitch on like tons of people's uh, videos. You know, pitching movies is disheartening and <laughs> demoralizing enough. I mean, you put yourself out there, you develop stories that are supposed to be 100, 120 minutes long, and you, you figure out every nuance and someone's like, nah. You know, it, and it's, it's hard because um, you have to see and feel and live and breathe the movie in your head and almost pre-make it well before you're going to pitch it or you're trying to get these jobs. And, um, you know, sometimes people just don't want to see what you're talking about. Sometimes they already have their heart set on something else, you know, but you have to still put that work in. Every time I've made a movie or written a movie or developed a movie, I feel like I've already made it. I don't want to feel like that. But more often than not, 99 out of 100 times, every you're going out there with projects to pitch or develop or hope you find a home. The answer is no. And so those things never get made or you wait till another day and find it. And I don't let things die. So um, the music video process, House for the View, there's something immediate about it when you make a video. We, we came up with it at the end of May, I mean, mid-May. I think we were shooting it by June 6th. It was done by the end of June. You know, we cut it in maybe six or seven days. And then we were in the post and color and sound on it. And they needed it by the end of June. And... You know, they debuted it the same day as as um, my film, ironically, which is totally random. Um, so I had two things come out on the exact same day on on, uh, on July fifteenth. So, but there was a quick turnaround to that. You know, in conversely, you work in a movie and you're you're on it for two years. When it was fanboys, I, I developed that one, and you know, making it and seeing it to release was like a, a seven year process. Barely lethal was four something year process. So, you. Each thing is totally unique. I mean, the very first feature I did, I took over for another director. Um, they were already four days into production. And a friend called me and said, what are you doing today? And I was in LA. It was a Sunday. I was pitching animated movie earlier that week. And then I was about to fly home to the East Coast. And they're like, meet me at Starbucks. And uh, I met him and another friend I know at Starbucks. I knew they were in production on the film. And they're like, do you want to direct it? Our director just took off. And I was like, wait, what? They're like, yep, we're going to set right now. There's a white van outside of the Starbucks from La Cienega. I, um, I was like, sure. An hour later, I'm driving up to the Disney ranch and uh, I'm directing this movie. I hadn't even read the script. So there's that, there's that scenario too. And you just get thrown in and you better know, better hope you know how to, to swim because there's no lifeguard and no one's giving you CPR and there's no floaties. <laughs> you just go. And, uh, it's not a, a great movie, but me personally on that one, I'm proud of what I made shooting for four days, not even having a chance to start read the entire script, just directing from the sides. Not even, I didn't cast these people. I didn't crew this, this movie. I didn't pick these locations. I didn't write the script. I haven't had input into a single word. And here I am in charge directing it. And I didn't even wake up knowing I was going to be involved in it. So there are those kind of scenarios and you always say to yourself, it is never going to be crazier than this. Oh my God, what I went through on that one. And it's always crazier. The next one was dealing with Harvey Weinstein, you know? So you're, it's, it's crazy. Every project is so unique and it should be because each story, each movie is like a living, breathing entity. It's like a real thing to be. It's like a person and I have to nurture it and take care of it and, Make sure it gets what it needs. And then I protect it like a parent. And I will cut your fucking throat if you try to fuck with what I'm making. Like, it has to get to that point where you're like, no, I know what's best for my kid. And you are not what's best for it. You're you're trying to come in and profit off my kid. Or you're trying to come in here and give my kid drugs. Get the fuck out of here. I literally have to protect the movie like that. And there are a lot of people when you make a movie that come in and they have their own agendas. And it's you're dealing with hundreds of people. And it's still an art form. But imagine you have a big giant paintbrush and a hundred people are trying to move the paintbrush. 
in different directions. That's what making a movie is like. And you have to get all 100 people to be working together to at least get these brush strokes in the right direction, to at least have it communicate the basics. And then you're lucky if it has all those extra things. And the more problematic people in the process, the harder it is to do that. So early on, it's targeting the good people, targeting the good cast, targeting good humans, people that want to be there, that, that, are, that aren't out for themselves, they're there, but they're for the project. And then you feel like you could trust, you could collaborate, and then you start moving in the direction. Then you can add depth and nuance and shading, and then your drawing, your picture gets so much better when you have the right team. Because if you don't have the right team, movies are impossible, absolutely impossible. That's why most movies don't work. Because um, people come at them with different agendas and different priorities and different levels of work ethic. Some people want to just get in and out. Some people want to see it through the end. Some people just want that paycheck. Some people just want their name on it. They don't really care. They're not going to pull any weight. Um, so you really have to edit the people. And that's just good for anybody in life. Edit the people in your life. There's, if you, I bet if you made a list and gave the pros and cons of people in your life, you'd be able to edit some of the bad things out of your life. I think a lot of people did that during the pandemic. Um, they had a chance. They had a reprieve from the grind of life to say, what's good for me? Is this really good for me? This is ho actually horrible for me. And I went through that that uh that process and um you know it's not easy um but you reprioritize so what is the most important thing in my life my kids period my partner and then you expand that out you know and, and it's very similar with a movie what's the most important thing here you got to protect the story period you know you don't make deals over um I could put this in or this product in, or I could get this beat in to serve this for this person. And suddenly it becomes watered down and it becomes something impure. And so you always have to protect that, that story in each scene. What am I doing here? What's the point of the scene? What is the emotion I'm trying to convey or the story beat I'm trying to, to that's going to be necessary to propel us forward. How do you best communicate that? Where are you putting the camera? Where's the emphasis? Who's the point of view in the scene? You know, in this is movie, is it Paris's scene? Is it Ruby's scene? Is it the villain scene? Like you have to, you go in and you have to check off all these boxes and then where do you put the camera to best tell that? Where, where are they at emotionally? Are they dominating the frame? Are they lost in the frame? Are they small? Is it over the shoulder? Is it, is it clean? Is it dirty? Are you seeing part of this character? Is it a two shot and they're head to head? There's so many ways you can tell the same scene. And there's almost too many choices. So directing is all about choices, but always keeping in the back of your head, I have to protect the story and the scene. As you know, and I believe I had told you uh, when we last spoke, Kyle, that I would like to adopt one day. In the years of your experience, before having children and now having children, as you had stated, yeah. it's, it's, it's protecting your child. It, it's setting those boundaries. Have you found, and I'm asking this for myself, and even for people that are in your situation are already a parent or myself that would like to adopt who work in the entertainment industry. Do you see things and work differently once you have children than before having children? More specifically, I'm, you know, we come from the same area. Um, people say you're very East Coast. I believe I will always be driven, determined, blunt, um, unapologetic and very true to who I am and what I believe how I should be responsible with my reputation and with who I am as a person to not fluff bullshit or beat around a bush. Do you soften a little bit once you have children or do like with your projects, do you become a little bit more, is it protective territorial? What do I have to look forward to when becoming a parent? being in this industry that you already have experience and that you're experiencing now pre fatherhood and now post fatherhood. Well, children are the greatest gift. I mean, I really feel like that's we're here. Everyone that's here, everyone that's having a conversation that's listening to this is the descendant of a line of reproduction. Thousands and thousands of years. You made it. Other people didn't. And I want to continue that. I think that's an important and sacred thing. I, the idea that I have kids and I can impart what I've learned and have fun with them and hopefully set them up to have great lives and families, that's incredible. 
it requires tremendous sacrifice. It requires tremendous focus. Um, I'll tell you, I had a lot more free time before I had kids. Every single minute of my life that isn't uh, geared towards work or making a movie um, or my projects, it's it's kids. You know, I write or I do these things when I pick them up from school. I don't have a nanny. I do it all. Um, I take them to school. So for me, it's I have to find be very expeditious and productive during the moments that I have time for me uh, because they are much more fleeting. And then you work at night, you work whenever you can. And sometimes you work while they're playing nearby. And so it requires like reorganization. It requires you putting your ego aside. You do have to be selfless. And I think those are actually good lessons I graduated into. I wasn't, I, I, I find I'm, I'm, I think I'm a pretty selfless person in general. I'll help people. And, you know, just the way I was raised, I wanted five kids. We all had to help each other. And, you know, it's just, that's, that's who I am. I am protective too. I know, I know my boundaries. Growing up in New Jersey, I went to NYU film school. I lived in Manhattan for a long time. You have to say, this is my space. This is my boundary. This is who I am, you know, back off. But I also am very nice. I think it, it's maybe some, like people take advantage of it or, and I watch it happen because I'm very nice. I def, I'm, I'm deferential to people and, and their comfort. And I like, you know, I, I was like to treat people, strangers, especially better than I would treat myself. I think that's how you make the world a better place. You treat people better, not just the same as how you want to be treated, treat them better. And if everybody did that, all the problems would be solved. Literally. You don't know somebody, don't treat them just how you want to be treated. Go in, give it the benefit of that, treat them better. I think that's a good philosophy to live by. Not everyone lives by it because surely that, that's not how people live. People are horrible to people and people hide behind social media and they they hate people they've never met and they hate people because of the color of their skin or where they're from or they you know they like a different sports team i hate you that's it's a default which is which is hard and it's sad given the opportunity i think a lot of people in a one-on-one -on -one situation would change but with kids they don't know all that stuff they don't know anything they're so pure and so it's protecting that purity and i think you know for anybody going into it it's knowing that you're going to have to make some uh, considerable sacrifices because it's not your life. You're, it's their life and you're kind of also have to make sure you have time for you and take care of you and you have to take care of yourself so you can take care of other people. But it's a major uh, reorganization, almost a reboot of your, your mentality. And for me though, I, like I said, it wasn't a culture shock. Uh, I felt like I just eased right into it. My, my siblings are parents and we all came from a big family and they have big family. So um, I was ready for it. It wasn't like I was the first person in my immediate family to have a kid. You know, my kids are maybe the, you know, the ninth, 10th and 12th in the, uh, you know, the, uh, the Newman grandkids uh, line. So there's a lot of support and there's a lot of people. Um, so I was ready for it. So I think it, it, be, be around people with kids and be around kids. So you're not just shocked by it, you know, expose yourself to it. And it's a lot harder than having a pet. I know a lot of people try to equate it. Uh, there's, there's nothing similar. Um, but it is the best thing ever making this movie too. My kids are obsessed with video games. They're obsessed with vintage video games. My son went through a whole phase during the pandemic playing every version of Super Mario from the original all the way up. Uh, you can play like Doki Doki Panic, you know, the game that it was Super Mario 2 was based on. Like, it, he became a video game fanatic. So I suddenly was making a movie about video games and video game history. And I wanted to program as much video game history into it. And I did that for them. You know, I was like, they're going to watch this movie eventually. And they're going to go, oh, my God, I love this one. And we talked about this. And there's references to modern games I put in there because I know that stuff they were into. And at the time, they were five and seven. But I know they're going to graduate into seeing it. So I'm doing things for them. Because I was like, you know, they're going to appreciate this at some point. They can't really watch the movie yet because somehow this movie's R-rated. I don't know how. It's really like PG-14. It's not a hard R movie. But I think there's one or two drug references. So they, you know, they, they cripple you with the R rating. But um, you do, you want to do things for them. You want to live through them. And that's a big perspective change. Uh, I don't think it changes the way I approach work or the way I would direct or write necessarily in terms of the, the tone or the style 
but maybe you know my subject matter uh changes a little bit but i i think you're as you just want to still be pure to yourself in the creative process um because you don't want to sell out and you don't want to feel like you're you're not the person you should be in your kids eyes um and they're at an age where they, they you know they're starting to realize what is what do you do dad like what does that mean what's directing what what happened they watch a lot of youtube and they watch people making um you know videos they watch a lot of content and it's obviously it's it's policed you know but they're kids they, that's just what their generation is exposed to and so you learn from what they're experiencing and you're like wow you're way ahead of where i was uh at this point in terms of you know devices and computers and that type of knowledge there's an emotional intelligence that comes from experiencing content scripted content i feel like people have a quicker shorthand now in relating to other people they see so many more faces they see so many more experiences um kids are very intuitive and uh in an advanced way now um so you, you do learn from your kids but i don't i don't think it's ultimately going to change you unless you are in, in a stubbornly selfish person i think you're gonna you're gonna thrive with kids it'd be great i appreciate that and honestly thank you for the share kyle as my sicilian grandfather always said wherever you stay leave it better than how you found it. Whoever you meet, leave them better than how you've met them. And uh, you yeah. remind me of that. Oh, thank you. I think that's that's a good mantra. It's great to hear. I, I hope people continue that. It's simple. It really is simple. It should be ingrained in, in everyone. And it's hard to believe that it's it's not. And it's hard to believe when you just, you, you go on the internet and you look at stuff and just the, uh, the garbage that people spew at each other, the hatred, and everyone wants to hide behind an agenda or politics. And really, they're just as lost as the other side. You know, they're all complaining and they're all uh, ruthless to each other. And you just want everyone to step it up a level. You know, it's like clean up your act. You know, everyone, come on, we can all do better, like across the board. I agree. I totally agree. And I will like to say to people like us, as I said before, I'm going to say it again. As long as we continue to stay true to our narrative, speak through the best in its most honest way, that's where the difference is going to come from. And even when we look at your past projects and what one up, it really is a go to feel good. That's just very different. And you know, if they end up doing a remake of your film, you did something really right because uh, I'm not going to, I don't see how anyone could have done it better. Once again, I'm going to be watching it this weekend. I'm, I, so far as it still stands, I have a clear weekend. Either way, just from listening and watching the trailer, it's a feel good movie. It's a feel, feel good film. And I, I believe from what I saw, very well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know what i I am very proud of it. It, it, it takes a lot to get a movie over the finish line. It takes a lot to get a movie made um, and to get it out. And everyone was so supportive. Richard Reed at BuzzFeed Studios. You know, we all we shared the same vision for it and protected it to the end. And it's out there in the world. And there's nothing I can do or change or or really say. It's meant for people to go experience it on their own. Maybe you'll watch it with your friends. Maybe you watch it alone at night by yourself. Maybe you do get to watch it on a big screen. I think all those things do change the way you feel about a movie. Comedies are better when you watch with people. I can't control any of that. You know, I don't know the person reviewing it versus, you know, the, you know, a group of 12 year olds that, that come across it. Like everyone's going to have their own unique experience with it. All I can do is, is make the best thing I think I can make for the money and the time I had and hope that people, have a positive experience with it and i and i really do believe the message is universal and the themes are are great and the heart it wears its heart on its sleeve and you know hopefully you can tell that from the trailer and um man everyone did such a such a great job so at this point i'm like you know I, it's like it's like putting your baby off to college i'm like nothing else i can do i guess you know i'm here <laughs> if you need me but you know like 
you know, I'm not, I can't do any more than that. And that's, that's hard too. I feel like I just, there's a strange emptiness that comes when you finally release a movie into the world. And now I'm just figuring out next, what's next and where to push. And obviously I'm developing a lot of stuff, but it's, it suddenly becomes much more um, heated and focused and you really have to get going again because like, like we're talking about it's freelance. You're just adrift. You're hoping that someone gives you the chance to go do this again and start all over. You've got to start all over. It just starts with a few words on the page and you just start adding people to the team and making it real and making other people believe it's real. And it's, it's a strange process. I know maybe it's masochistic, but I have to keep find a boulder now to push up a mountain, you know, and that's what it feels like, you know, um, as much as it's an art form, it's really a, it's, it's it's like a it's a physical feat you know that you have to somehow survive um i think most filmmakers will probably tell you the, the same thing but um i think until you've done it you don't really know what it does to you and thankfully i survived this one you know i feel like i'm a better a better person a better filmmaker a better dad you know a better partner all those things um and you feel like, okay, that's a success on, on the me and in, inside of me level. I, you know, what I got out of the one up experience is beyond, you know, in lifetime, you remember it forever. You know, it's like, you know, very thankful. So thankfully I had like Lionsgate and Amazon prime and all these people and, and superstars like Ruby behind the movie and believing in it. So. Once again, you can watch right now available on Prime, One Up, directed by my good friend, my a Jersey native, not too far from where I'm originally from, Mr. Kyle Newman, filmmaker, New York Times bestselling author, father, Jedi. You can go ahead and support Cynthia Lovely, known as Sin, where her new hit track, House with a View, directed by the one and only Kyle Newman. Kyle, who would you like to give a shout out to? A shout out to well, I'm gonna say all the one up, all the one up cast and crew. You guys were amazing. Um, I want to especially thank uh, Cynthia because she's watching the baby, so I could come do this interview. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tag team. You gotta like uh, take care of each other and support each other's art. So I I, don't, I couldn't have done this without her and having a partner like her. That's that's a, such an amazing mom and friend. So really. Gotta thank her. Uh, where was where was I gonna go? Um, I had it right there. Just had a a, a moment. <laughs> Your social media, where are you at the most? Is it Instagram? Do you even have a TikTok? I I do have a TikTok. I forget what it is. It's kind of more <laughs> new to me. I I peruse a little bit. Cynthia's very into it. I'm Kyle underscore Newman on Instagram. Kyle underscore Newman Twitter um kyle newman uh i have a fan page on facebook and um what am i on tiktok i want to find out for you right now yeah, i'm please. kyle underscore m underscore newman <laughs> so it's a little little extra m in the middle of their underscore book ended by underscores so you can you can uh, find me there I, i'd love to keep the conversation going. if you watch one up let me know what you think even if you hate it I will, I will definitely, I highly <laughs> doubt it. I highly doubt it. I, you know, it just reminds me of those days when I played Centipede in Donkey Kong. My favorite was Pitfall. You know, yes. come on. All that stuff, <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, man. Once again, streaming now on Prime Video, One Up by director Kyle Newman. Head on over to MI, uh, IMDB. You know, get those ratings up. Only if you like it, you know, none of this BS, this bullshit of one, two stars. If you like it, support it. Remember, we're talking about people's lives. We're talking about jobs here. Um, definitely, you know, give it a great rating on Prime Video. Uh, you know, connect with Kyle. You've got his Instagram. He shared with you his TikTok. Filmmaker, New York Times bestselling author, father, Jedi, and my new friend. Uh, you know, once again, Kyle Newman, I'm heading back over. Kyle underscore Newman, K-Y-L-E underscore N-E-W-M-A-N. Kyle, any closing thoughts? 
No, just thank you so much for having me on. Like I said, great to meet you. Thank you for reaching out to me. Uh, great to be part of your community. Uh, appreciate everyone out there, all your fans that are that are listening and tuning in. Um, very thankful. So we'll keep the convo going. Hopefully I'll be on again at some point soon with something fun and exciting to promote. You're going to be on any time, whether you have something to promote awesome. or not. I hope to come Thank on you. out. Absolutely. To California sometime. Definitely on set. Uh, if you need any photos or anything done behind the scenes, like I told you, I got camera equipment that's been sitting for so long since the pandemic. Um, I love to usually, or I usually travel with my clients, but um, things are finally starting to open up now. Remember, tune in tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern, live on air with Stephen Cuoco, power985.com. Download the iOS or Android app. Tune in on Alexa. We stream live on Stream It or Streama, Live Radio FM, MyTuner, which is one of my top favorites, and many others. 200 countries and counting, 2 p.m. Eastern, July 20th. All about Kyle Newman. Recap, one up. Get those high ratings in. Watch it, support it. Available now on Prime Video. Head on over to IMDb. Get that 2.5 up to at least an 8 or 9. Because I know once I watch it, I'm going to be scoring this high. But I'm going to watch it first. I'm not going to be you know, doing what people are doing, not even watching it and giving it a rating. How can you do that? I highly doubt they're precognitive. But, you know, goodness will prevail. Uh, also, check out Sin House with a View. Go to YouTube. Congratulations to her. 38, almost 39,000 views. A lot of positive uh, reviews here. I'm going to read one by Joseph. Finally, you and Katie are together. I love it. I wasn't sure what the video would be like for a song with this title, but this was so clever. Once again, House with a View by Sin, directed by Kyle Newman. Hope you guys have a great day, great week. We have a lot else coming up here. I've got Weston Anderson. I'm going to be covering Monster Jam this Saturday. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Friday, um, 7 p.m. I'm going to be interviewing Weston Anderson, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific time on July 20th. Then I've got Rajan Dave and Jeff Linden with Herb, uh, what is it? Herb NJ Org. I believe I wrote that down correctly. My first time talking about not CBD, we're going to be talking about pot and dispensary and everything else like that. I think it's going to be more than just a great topic point and subject, but I'm looking forward to it once again with Rajan Dave, Jeff Linden, with herbnj.org. And you know what? Do I have it up here? Yeah, I do. Uh, Oh, HerbEnjoy.com. There we go. I'm giving a big shout out to those guys. Herb Enjoy. Sometimes I scribble because I get impatient when I write things down. That's going to be on Thursday, July 21st at 1 p.m. Then July 22nd, we've got my good friend EJ, the mega superstar, the legend himself from Discovery's Naked and Afraid. July 22nd, 1 p.m. That's a Friday. So recap, we just had Kyle Newman today, July 20th, Weston Anderson with Monster Jam, 3 p.m. Wednesday, July 20th, Thursday, July 21st, Rajon Dave and Jeff Linden with Urban Joy talking about all things pot, dispensary, and it's going to be a very educational show. And then my good friend EJ. EJ is also from New Jersey, the Bud Lake area, and uh, he's from Naked and Afraid, Discovery. The legend, the champ, the everything. Looking forward to getting those gifts he said he's going to be sending out. I hope I get a custom knife. That would be really awesome. I'm going to put it in a nice glass case if I get one of those things. 2 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow, July 20th. Kyle Newman. Recap. Share. Tell all your friends. Tune in. Have a good one. Socials and let's connect.